Okay, Peter from uh, Retro Software. How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Uh, we just had a chat with one of your colleagues. Just telling us about Burt. Now, I'll be honest with you. When I heard it, I thought that rings a bell. He said, "Oh, it can't ring a bell. Whole new project. Uh, tell us a little bit about it." Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, we're hoping to launch it at this year's replay, 2011. Um, and effectively, our community is all about. Uh, it grew out of the Acorn BBC Micro online community. Um, and effectively, we had some really good coders in our group. Uh, all of whom kept saying that they really wished they'd been able to actually create a project back in the golden era of computer software. Unfortunately, they missed the boat. So at which point me and Dave got working, decided, well, there's no reason why we couldn't actually release games now. So we've managed to get together a whole load of people um, to basically work together, come up with the best routines, create new PC software. Um, and we've, as, D as Dave told you earlier, we've reverse engineered quite a lot of old games, created sort of new assembler routines um, to the point now that we're creating some games which most people can't believe are actually running on a beep. They look that good. So. I mean, yeah, I mean, that does look fantastic. I mean, the whole sort of underground retro scene, I mean, I've seen like sort of online games, we were creating games with Spectrum, profitable as well. I mean, are you a profit sort of um, a developer as well, or is it all freeware or? Retro software is 100% non, not for profit. Yeah. Um, the BBC Micro and the Acorn, which is the area that we're specifically targeting, as opposed to uh, a number of the other software retro publishers that are out there are targeting the, the Spectrum and the, the Commodore. And they're generally, they're, they're a much bigger uh, community. So because we're such a small group in comparison and um, we're generally 100% not for profit so anything we do charge is ploughed immediately straight back in again and it, it's purely for the cost of the media and stuff like that that we're, we're doing um, that said we've got plenty of free downloadable titles which are all perfectly immediately usable by emulators um, or you can copy them to a disc and use them immediately with a, a normal beep um, so yeah we've got about eight or nine titles I think available for free downloads and we've got three released titles as of today which you can see at the website so it's purely just pure passion that's all it is it's down to sort of like you know, as you say you, you want to be part of the sort of golden era the 80s 90s you know that sort of well, early 80s early 90s um, I mean <laughs> I'm just looking at that now I'm amazed that is actually coming out of a BBC I mean <laughs> do you get a shot of that on there I mean I had a BBC micro it was you know and um, that is just fantastic I mean how, how long did it take to create something like on the beep using the technology you've been using with it? Um, well, the guy who created this uh, is a guy called Rich Talbot Watkins, and he actually, uh, up until recently, was working for Sony, writing PlayStation software. Uh, he's one of our best programmers. I mean, he knows the, the BBC Micro inside out. Um, so this is actually a game that he originally started writing uh, sort of back in, in, in the kind of tail end of the commercial era, and he tried to get some of the software publishers to pick it up then, but he couldn't really get much of an interest, so him and his partner basically just shelved it. Um, but. Uh, he, he picked it up again about uh, I don't know, six months ago, so this is probably another couple of months' work on top. Um, but generally, it's, it, the time taken, is, is it, it can be several months, but it's usually because most of our guys are doing it all in their spare time, so it's purely about how much spare time they can find to do these projects. Um, but I mean, for instance, we've got another project called Hard Hat Harry, which we've probably got a disc lying around for somewhere. Uh, that one was written in the space of a month by another one of our really fantastic coders. Um, and he, he's at university. A month. A month. He's at university. <laughs> Doesn't happen very often these days in game development. Doesn't happen very much at all. And uh, he's, he's away at university and he got a, the Christmas holidays. Um, decided that he had a month there that he wasn't really doing an awful lot with, so he decided that he was going to create a game in the space of one month to fit between his two terms and semesters. So he set himself the deadline challenge of doing it within a month. And he did it. He did it. It's, it's fantastic. It looks just like a 1983 release, which with graphics that even he describes as terrible. <laughs> But um, it's actually one of our most addictive titles. We, we're still getting people coming back now saying, oh my God, how do you get past level three? So you're, get, you're getting a pretty good reception then? Oh, absolutely, yeah. We found, I mean, we, we, we try to come along to as many of these uh, retro shows as we can. And we have had people actually competing against each other. Uh, we had one couple in particular who we couldn't get off one of our titles called Crystal Connection because they kept coming back, barging off anyone else who was on in order to try and beat their partner's score, um, which was entertaining to say the least. I mean, in, in light of sort of like, you know, multi-million sort of developments, you know, games like Call of Duty and Battlefield, you know, the big, the big boys and that, I mean, are you surprised at the sort of, the level of excitement around retro gaming and retro programming? I mean, it's really sort of blown up in the last few years. Um, yeah, I mean, I think basically a lot of it is about the fact that uh, the, the older games, because they didn't have anywhere near the amount of resources that modern games do, have to distill all their gameplay into something that you can get into and get playing right, rather quickly. Um, that, combined with the fact that, of course, everybody who's, who's, who's a modern gamer now tends to remember the older systems because they grew up on them. Um, so they've always got that nostalgia factor. Um, yeah, so I, I, I can perfectly imagine why people 
like retro software. Well, I mean, thanks a lot, Peter Tongdress. Really appreciate it. And best of luck with all the future projects. You're welcome. Fantastic. Thank Cheers. You.